to another episode of In the Shop. I'm Clay Croft, and I'm with John Bowser from Bowser's Cruisers in Livingston, Montana. He's brought in a pretty unique Land Cruiser today that uh, is pretty uncommon for the United States here. So I'll just let you describe what makes that unique. Well, this is a 1990 uh, HDJ81 that I bought at auction in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, what makes it unique is, you know, it's right-hand drive, obviously, because it's right. from a, the JDM market, but it's also a turbo diesel five-speed, which was never offered here in the United States. And you think there's only between something like one or 200 of these in the country right now? Yeah, I wouldn't say there's more than a thousand, that's for sure. I'd say sure. a couple hundred. Um, you know, I've wanted one of these since I was a kid. I've owned many US 80 series, but mm. this was the first uh, diesel one I was able to buy because of the age of import. You have to wait till they're 25 years old. Sure. And the earliest we can get cars now is 1991. Yeah, currently. Correct with the 25 years. So this is a 90, so it's about as new as you can get it here in the States. Yeah, I bought it last year. Um, I've had it in the States for you know almost a year and a half now. Uh, you've been able to turn Toyotas and Land Cruisers that was a passion of yours into a job. And now you get to work with them all the time and you still kind of bring in cars on the side too. Started out working on these. I helped pay for some of my college with you know flipping Land Cruisers, selling parts. Yeah. And then it transitioned into being a mobility instructor. Ah. and uh, training people how to drive and use these. Cool, so you've probably driven these all over different places of the world. Uh, correct. Cool. Yeah, there's some unique things about this that we, like the window flares up top. That's yeah. a, definitely a Japanese That's a Japanese thing, yeah, the smoker thing. vents. The smoker <laughs> vents. You know, they get in the way whenever you're, you know, driving on a trail, they're always scraping on something, and you stick your head out the window and you hit them, and, but they look cool. Yeah, but they look cool. So you had a custom uh, rear bumper fabricated for this truck. It just finished and you have a local guy here in town that did it. One I've been designing in my head for years and I'm glad it's finally on an 80 series. Sure, yeah that's great. I'm actually gonna have the same fabricator uh, get rid of the factory brackets because they're pretty weak but then build sliders that those then sit on. Yeah that'll be very cool. Do you, do you have plans to lock this one? Yeah I'm gonna put in 80 series you know from a US 80 series lockers front and rear. Cool. The import process now what, what does that look like? The main thing is you want to make sure the vehicles you're buying are old enough and just do your research. I spent months researching it before I bought my first one overseas. It's not a $2,000 process, it's much more than that. Sure. And fortunately, since this has the same body style as the US one, most all the parts are actually, you can buy at your local Toyota dealer. I mean, your doors, glass, any yeah. that kind of stuff, interior parts sure. other than the right-hand drive. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the mechanical parts you can also get, I would say, in the 80% range you can get at the local Toyota dealer. So t to you as a Land Cruiser owner, a cruiser head, like what does this car do for you? When I'm in it, I don't have to worry about work or anything else. I'm just yeah. driving down the road. It's your happy place. Correct. Cool. What do you think of a, the right-hand drive You know, it's in very, the US? It's very easy to parallel park. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're looking right at the curb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show me the engine. I think that's probably one of the most unique things about this. So let's take a look at the engine. Okay. So with the hood open here, I can see engine one HD dash T. I'm assuming the dash T stands for turbo. Yes, sir. Cruiser, this 80 series, you could have got it in Japan with several motors, um, two of them being diesel, the one HD T, which is the turbo version or the one HZ, very similar engine, just non-turbo. Sure. Or you could have got it with the 3F, which is similar to the US ones. We sure. Use. So what would be the benefit of the turbo? You get a lot quicker response. Um, the, the top end's a little better. It's kind of got a better power band overall. It's more of a, a tractor motor, more steady. Um, this, you know, because of the turbo, it causes you to get worse fuel economy. Sure. And they Just already don't get great it. fuel economy. So what does this get? Uh, currently I'm getting you know, 16 to 18, which is much better than a U.S. version. But Yeah, absolutely. Being that you import these, what do you look for in the engine? Is there anything that... Uh... Well, you know, unless you're there in person, which I've gone there in person to, to look at auctions, but when you're buying them just off auction sheets, uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can go off of other than three to five pictures. Um, sure. There's a sheet that's written in kanji, you know, an auction sheet that gives yeah. you a description. But uh, you, once you get that interpreted, it's still... Uh, those guys don't have much time to inspect the vehicles. Mm. You, you have, they probably spend five to ten minutes per truck inspecting it. So it's, there's a big leap of faith when you're buying one over there. I've definitely bought some that you get them and you realize it's a parts car, not a driving car. Sure. Well, cool. Let's take a look inside. There's got to be some of those things here that uh, 
we didn't get for a while or something just because this was a Japanese spec. Yeah, one, one thing we didn't get is this, but the you know auto temperature control. Um, all the early US ones you see, this is just a blank button. You know, in case you get scared, you've got your grocery cart handle right there. Yep. Uh, we've got our compass and altimeter. You know, those are kind of neat. It's not really that useful, but very, it looks cool. It does look cool. This one has headlight washers and factory fog lamps. So there's switches over here for that. Um, many of these, not this one, have a refrigerated center console right here. It's a little taller and, and shaped differently, but sure. that was a, a popular option. So in the 80 series, the center lock, the center diff lock is the first that we see that come into play, right? Can yeah, the, the 91, 92 US 80 series had the center diff lock button. The later ones, you could buy that button and put it in and plug it in and it'll function. Oh, it's just really? It was omitted. Sure. Yeah, the, a lot of these Japanese ones have factory hand throttles, which is really nice. So if you're, like you said, win winching or something like that, you can hold the RPM and keep the battery up. Very cool. Sweet. Well, thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. And if you have another cool rig, let us know. Will do. Thanks. Thank you.